Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're certainly thankful and grateful to the Almighty God for our being here and that our being here is not against our will, but it is the gift of God. Let us begin this evening uh, with the verse of a song from the hymnal, uh, Father Alone. Tempted and tried, we'll hold me. Okay. Yeah, the that's when we wonder why others prosper, living so weak. Year after year, Father, we know all about it. Father, we understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Oh, till death say, I love you, Master. A few more days to labor and wait, then we'll reap. Living so we can year after year, Father, we know all about it. Father, we understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When he comes from his home in the sky. Then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. Father, we know all about it. Father, we. Understand why? Cheer up, my brother. <coughs> in the sunshine, we understand it all by and by. All right. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are thankful and grateful that you once again have allowed us the opportunity to call upon thy holy and righteous name. We thank you, O oh God, and we praise you for we realize that it is 
by your grace and your mercy that we are here right now. We thank you and we praise you. We ask now in the name of Jesus that you would continue to go with us and stand by us, that you would continue to lead, guide, and direct us, and that you, O oh God, will help us to be good servants unto thee. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm trying to uh, figure out something here. Um, we uh, something is wrong with my conference line, but uh, we'll get it. We'll get it figured out some kind of way. All right. Let's see tonight what we can get done. And I, I, I think you can still hear me on the conference line. You may not be able to hear me as well as I would like for you to hear me because um, I get uh, quite a bit of feedback uh, when I put it on speakerphone. And I've gotten uh, the timing off on the audio some kind of way. So i got to figure out what that is and get it straightened out. All right, tonight we uh, began talking about how God increases our faith. How God increases our faith. Now, sometimes when we think of God increasing our faith, we think of, that God is, is going to make things easy for us. And what we will find out in studying what happened with Moses and the children of Israel as they were being led uh, from captivity that things did not get easier but things in fact got harder so tonight as we look at this particular lesson I want you to be mindful that there is a reality in serving a true and living God Now, as we look, um, the thing, the first thing I, I need to let you know that uh, the lesson will be coming uh, this week and next week will be coming from Exodus chapter 15 and 16. So, either one, uh, we will cover a lot of the material will be coming from those two chapters. So if you read those and familiarize yourself with those, uh, uh, you'll see why we have come to some of the conclusions that we have. Uh, God leads us on a journey into intimacy with himself by putting us into situations designed to increase our faith. When Jesus returns, he will be looking for faith in our lives, uh, Luke 18 and 8. Even now, God is looking for faith in each one of us. Our faith determines the degree of our intimacy with God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, Hebrews 11 and 6. But Hebrews 11 and 6 also says something else. Let's read that entire verse, and this comes from uh, God's Word translation. No one can please God 
without faith. Whoever goes to God must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who seek him. No one can please God without faith. Whoever goes to God must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Do you believe because faith makes sense or because faith doesn't make sense? One or the other. Which one is it? Do you believe that faith makes sense or that it doesn't make sense? I you got to be in one school of thought or the other. Now, let's think about this for a moment. Do you believe because faith makes sense or do you believe or because faith doesn't need to make sense? Some Christians think people cannot understand God and should not try to understand Him. They can't understand, you can't understand God and you should not even try to understand it. And I wonder about that sometimes. Why would you try to understand God? God does the impossible. Others believe that nothing true is irrational, including true faith. The truth is God gives us minds that should be developed and used. To ignore intellectual growth is to live a stunted life and a naive life. God wants us to trust and put our trust in and faith in Him even while we ponder and wonder about so many matters and so many mysterious things. Even so, we do not believe in a void nor a leap into darkness. Faith is reasonable. Through reason alone, though reason alone cannot explain faith in its whole or its entirety. In order for us to have an intimate relationship with God, requires faith. But how does God increase our faith? By putting us in situations that require faith. These two chapters, Exodus 15 and 16, reveals two ways God increases our faith. He increases our faith first off through disappointments chapter 15 of the book of Exodus we all have disappointments in life with things events jobs investments people and etc no matter the reason God uses our disappointments to increase our faith great success or victories are often followed by bitter disappointments. After the experience at the Red Sea, the Israelites are on a spiritual mountaintop. As recorded in the first 18 verses of Exodus 15, Moses and the Israelites sing a song of praise to the Lord. However, their music soon turns into murmuring. God, look where you brought us. Look where you done led us. 
How are you in the wilderness? Moses leads the Hebrews from the Red Sea to the wilderness of Shur. After three days in the wilderness, they find no water. Then they come to the oasis of Mara. But the water is bitter. The people began to grumble against Moses, asking him, what are we going to drink? Well, if they had really been logical, they would have been thinking along these lines. Uh, they would have been thinking, uh, we've been out here three days and ain't, and ain't, ain't died of, of thirsty. So God going to keep us alive until we find water. The water was bitter. Moses shows his faith by taking the problem to the Lord. verse 22 through 25 as a result this is what happens Exodus 15 and 25 said Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood he threw it into the water and the water became sweet there the Lord set down laws and rules for them to live by and there he tested them. You never thought about God putting you in a situation like that to see how much faith you have. And to see if you would trust in him even though you could not see your way out. In life we sometimes come to bitter waters. that we thought promised fulfillments and satisfaction. It should, it could be a whole myriad of things. It could be marriage, it could be friendship, it could be a new home, a new job. You wanted this new job because it was gonna pay you more and it was gonna be better for you. And you found out that wasn't a good job, that was a worse job than the one you had. Even though it pays you a lot of money, there's a whole lot of stuff about it you don't like that makes life miserable for you. You thought you wanted a new home. You got the new home and, and getting the new home just because you got the home you thought you wanted, you find out that there's some things wrong with that home that you didn't even dream about. Yet it turns out to be a disappointment and it turns out to be bitter. When we have bitter experiences, we like Moses should take it to the Lord. Not grumble about it. Not cry on everybody's shoulder that will listen, but take it to the Lord. Sometimes, some things may be bitter in your life right now. But the Lord gives you a promise in Jeremiah 33 and 3. You may have something bitter going on in your life right now. But Jeremiah 3 and 33 and 3 says, and this is from God's word, Call to me, and I will answer you. I will tell you great and mysterious things that you don't do not know. When Moses threw the wood into the water, it did not magically change the water. God changed the water because Moses obeyed in faith. At Marah, the Lord makes a statue or decree that the Israelites will not suffer any of the diseases or plagues God brought upon the Egyptians then God says, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus 15, 25 and 26. To experience God's healing like Moses did, you have to be obedient 
in the bitter waters of life. A surgeon performs surgery and sews up the incision. However, who does the healing? God does. Benjamin Franklin wrote this. God heals the patient and the doctor collects the fee. Admirer, the Lord proved or test the Israelites. God also uses our bitter experiences to test us and increase our faith. Whatever your Mara, God will use it as a test to see if you will draw, if he will draw you or drive you away. God, you didn't do what I thought you should have did, so I'm through with church. I'm through with my significant other because they are not what I expected them to be. I beg your pardon. I did not promise you a rose garden. From Myra, the Israelites traveled to Elam, where there are 12 wells and 70 palm trees. Now the Israelites could say my cup runneth over God was teaching the Israelites that if they looked to him in faith he would supply their needs that's why we have what we have a fantastic prayer promised in Philippians 4 and 19 Philippians 4 and 19, Paul writes, My God will richly fill your every need in a glorious way through Christ Jesus. We can trust God will always meet our needs. Now, I need to emphasize he will always he will always meet our needs now in the second next week we're going to talk about uh, the manner from heaven but the thing that I want to emphasize right now is God will always meet our needs whatever we need on earth he will always supply even if it's the courage to faith death he will supply what we need a lot of what we think we need will not help us We don't really need it. It's not good for us. No good for us. We don't really need it. We need to get rid of it anyway. He will supply your needs. So what do you really need? What do you really need? Health and strength, food, and a place to stay. Cover the basics. Once the basics are covered, what do you need? Paul put it this way at one point. He said, I've learned to be content no matter what state I'm in. Because I know it's going to get better. Because God made me the promise. It's going to get better. Now, we can always trust God to meet our needs.
I would love to feel like I did when I was 21. But I know those days are over with. I would love to be able to run around this complex three or four times nonstop. But those days are over with. I don't really need to do that anyway. What I really need to be able to do is just walk around it. Trust God to supply your needs, to meet your needs. We trust everything to meet our needs but God. We think we can meet our needs. You don't know what you need. You don't even know what you want. You just guessing. Y'all remember the old BB King blues song? BB say, I gave you a brand new Ford. And you said, I'm on a Cadillac. I gave, I let you live in my penthouse. And you say it, thanks for the shack. I bought you a steak with all the trimming. And you say it, thanks for the snack. I gave you seven children. And now you're trying to get them back. Troubles is all I need. What do you need? Trust God to meet your needs. Don't trust yourself. Trust God to meet your needs. God meets your needs. He, 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 he will meet your needs. He will meet your needs. He will meet your needs. And all you have to do is to act and be obedient. Whatever God has told you to do, and even though you may be standing at a place in your life, in life's journey where you're at the bitter waters in your life, if you are obedient even though Moses prayed to the Lord, said, Lord, I don't know what to do. They said, the water is bitter. And it is, Lord, it's bitter. God showed him a tree. And when he showed him the tree, Moses saw the tree and grabbed a piece of the wood and threw it in the water. What if he had said, Lord, what good is it going to do for me to throw a piece of wood in the water? This water bitter. But because he obeyed, threw the wood in the water. Now the water is drinkable. What kind of wood is this? But you first had to obey God. There's some wood. Throw it in the water. Man, throw that wood in that water. I don't know where that wood be. Animals might be doing their business on that wood. Be obedient. Do what God say do. Might not make sense to you. Do what God say. Always obey God. God say do it. Do it. I did what God said. My needs were met. I needed water. I could drink. The water became drinkable. I need to figure out how to pay these bills. God tells you what to do. Do X, Y, and Z. That don't make sense. Do X, Y, and Z. Alright Lord you say do it. I'm going to do it. And then you see because I did what God said do now I at least got a few minutes I'm out of trouble for a few minutes now I got time to see what else I can get done 
Trust him for one thing. Trust him for all things. Well, that's my time for tonight. I want you to be prayerful. I want you to be mindful. There are many people throughout the land and the country that are hurting because of the severe weather that that's taking place in many parts of the country. There's flooding all over the East Coast. Folks are uh, dealing with flash flooding in places that they don't normally get flooding. But look to God. God will strengthen your faith. He strengthens your faith by putting you in a difficult situation. Because of, as long as you're not in a situation where you become disappointed, it didn't. This ain't what I expected, Lord. I came to the I came to the church and I expected you're disappointed, but do you still trust him? After all, it's not about other folks; it's about you. It's about your relationship with God. It's not about how other folks treat you. It's about how you treat others. It's not about all of that stuff you're talking about or thinking about. It's about you and your relationship with God. All right, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, as we come to the close of the study of your word tonight, we thank you, O oh God, that things are as well as they are. We thank you, O oh God, because we realize that there is none like thee. You are our Alpha and our Omega. You are our beginning and our end. You are our first and our last. And we thank you, O oh God, for you have always supplied our needs. And in supplying our needs, you've always given us more than we were deserving of. You've always done more and done more abundantly than we expected. We ask you right now, touch those that are sick among us. Heal those that are sick among us. Heal and comfort the bereaved among us. Comfort those that uh, have lost a loved one. Comfort those that are grieving because they're at a bitter water place in their life. Comfort them right now and let them know that all they have to do is just hold on. And they'll be able in a little while. They'll be able to see that everything will be all right we ask you right now in the name of jesus to please sir have mercy on them look on our nation look on our cities and our countries bless them look on our sister churches and bless them and help those that are being bothered by others we ask so oh god that you let your peace reign we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, bless every church that stands open in your name. We ask you right now, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, take care of us, walk with us, stand by our side, be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
Visit SweetWater.com for the widest selection of music here at the best prices. Experience our award-winning...